Hi, it's Monday. You know what that means. It means yesterday was Sunday and I was desperately scrambling for a video idea and gaming news always sounds easy at the last minute. So here we are. But actually, there's a lot of gaming news that happened recently that I do want to talk about, ranging from things that really excite me to things that really upset me and then things that just I don't really care about at all, but it's topical. So <laughs> here we go. I really quickly want to remind you guys that I'm giving away a limited edition Nintendo Switch with the help of my friends at Panic Button and Perfect. Perfect World Entertainment, they have designed a beautiful custom hub inspired Nintendo Switch and they are allowing me to give it to one of you and if you want to learn how to enter you do have to watch my last video I put out on the channel, 10 eShop games worth buying. Speaking of learning how to do things, you can learn how to do literally everything on the face of the planet using the site Skillshare who is also sponsoring today's video. But before I talk about them, in my last gaming news video I asked some of you guys if you had any suggestions, ideas or wanted to submit any possible intros for this weird type of video that I barely ever actually do, the gaming news videos. And some of you sent in some pretty good stuff, but there was one standout. Oh man, that was like some legitimate submissions, but that one had me laughing every single time. That took some serious skill. And if you want to learn how to make amazing gaming intros just like that one, you can learn just how to do that on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, video editing, video production, and more. Whenever I talk about Skillshare, I always focus on video editing and video production because that's what appeals to me. And I feel like for a lot of you that might want to start a channel, it will really help. But honestly, if there is a skill that you've been thinking to yourself over the last however many months or years, I want to learn this thing, you can learn that thing on Skillshare. And actually, you might have noticed over the last couple of months, Skillshare has sponsored the channel quite a few times. To which, thank you Skillshare, but also the reason why is because you guys are loving it. Every time they sponsor me, so many of you guys go over to Skillshare, sign up and start learning new skills. And I'm sure a lot of you are just trying to be that first 500 people to sign up so you get two months free using that link in my description below. But even after that two months, a lot of you are sticking around and paying that low, low price of under $10 a month to keep learning more new skills. Thank you, Skillshare. And with all that being said, let's just jump right into it. First news, Nintendo kind of did us dirty with Nintendo Labo VR. Labo. I don't care. Whatever. You're gonna hear me say Labo a lot. Just get used to it. Or I, 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 whatever. Okay, be honest. Who of you was actually getting Labo Labo VR before now? I made a joke about it in my last gaming news video about how I just really didn't feel like being an elephant. <laughs> And how, judging by the promotional material, it looks like you had to hold the VR to your face all the time. It wasn't the kind of VR experience I was looking for as a consumer. So even as a heavily Nintendo Switch focused YouTuber, when I went to GameStop the following week and they asked me if I wanted to pre-order Nintendo VR, I said, ah, maybe not just yet. I'm in no hurry at all. Now, all of a sudden, apparently, I have it on pre-order. And the reason why is because you can play Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild in Labo VR the day that you get the VR. I mean, you can kind of play those games. Let's talk about that, okay? I have, I have some, I have some, I have some. I have some something. I don't know what it is, but I have some of it. And these are just free DLC patch add-on things to the games that aren't gonna cost any extra. I don't have to go out and spend my money just because I can play these games in VR. No, I, I do have to actually. I really have to. So Mario Odyssey isn't that grand. You get some extra mini games you can play in some of the worlds. It's not like a full VR adventure or anything like that. It's just some, some extra fun. That's fine. But Breath of the Wild, supposedly, you could play the entire thing in VR. Kind of. I see a lot of people getting really excited for this because oh, you can play Breath of the Wild in VR. It's amazing. It's great. It's fantastic. But is it really though? I mean, when I think of playing a game like Breath of the Wild in VR, my mind kind of goes to like Skyrim VR where you have the sword in your hand and you're waving it around. You know, you have these two Joy-Cons. I would kind of like to be able to use sword and shield and bow and arrow and stuff like that in first person. But it seems like this VR is very much still third person. You kind of play the role of the camera. You're locked onto Link and you follow him around through throughout his adventures as you just play the game normally. But you are standing in the world of Breath of the Wild. Like, I don't want to take that away at all. 
that is actually still really cool. It reminds me of games like Astrobot or Moss on the PlayStation VR, where you kind of control the action that's happening around the world and you kind of just watch it happen more than you are the action that's happening, if that makes any sense. But, and again, it is cool to an extent, but because of this fact, I don't see myself or many people wanting to play through the entire Breath of the Wild campaign, all like 40 hours it took me to finish it, if I'm not rushing through it, of course. In VR like this, I would probably much rather just play it again on my TV. I don't want to take this away from anyone that's too excited about it. At the start of my video, I said, in this video, I have some things that excite me, some things that upset me, and then some things that just eh. And this one was the eh. I really don't care one way or another, and I'm literally only getting it just so I can see what Breath of the Wild in VR is like, but I'm not expecting to be blown away. And that's fine. It's still not a product for me, but they definitely piqued my interest with this. And for those that are super excited about it, I'm really happy for you. And I personally hope that since I'm going to be owning this thing, that they include Mario Kart in here somewhere where I can play that in VR. Ah, so what do we got left? Something that upsets me and disappoints me, and something that really excites me. Well, let's do the good news before the bad and talk about Persona 5 coming to Switch. It's really weird how people are split on the fence here, with half the people saying there's no way this is going to happen, Persona 5 is a Sony exclusive, and it's never gonna find its way to Switch, and then the other half are already 100% convinced that it's coming to Switch and there's no two ways about it. Now, if here's the line separating the naysayers and the yaysayers, I'm definitely falling more on this side right here, right now, for a lot of reasons, but let's talk about the rumors, because I actually haven't talked about them on my channel yet. And can I just say that before any of these rumors came about, I thought this was a good idea months ago. I thought this was a good idea before Joker was announced to be in Smash. I just thought Persona 5 on Switch was a good idea. Let's talk about why Persona 5 might be coming to Switch. Because over the last few months, my voice just broke, we've been hearing a lot about Persona 5S or P5S or what that means. We've seen that term being flown around. I'm not even sure where it originated, but essentially somewhere along the line, someone found somewhere Persona 5S. And no one knew what it was or what it could be, but... Switch. I mean, S is the first letter in Switch, and we have Joker coming to Smash, so... Now, what else could S mean? Well, it could mean something like special. It could be a whole nother random word. Like, if we saw Persona 5 R, we could have been Persona 5 re-release. Like, what does the R mean? And then it was royal. So S really could be anything. It could be another version of the game coming to PlayStation 5. Or as Spawnway pointed out, it could be a mobile game. But I have, a, I have some theories here. One, if it is another kind of special edition going to PlayStation 5, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They're talking about Persona 5 Royal on April 24th, and then they said they're going to talk about Persona 5 S on the 25th. Why would you do two separate events for two special editions going to the same system? And why would you even make two special editions for the same system? What is the point in competing with yourself that way? And the people that are saying there's no way it'll go to Switch because they won't take it away from PlayStation. But if it's something like a mobile version or a PC version, it's already moving away from an exclusive. So why put it to mobile before you put it to Switch? Both of which are portable ways to play games. And Switch is the place that everyone wants it on. And it's an actual gaming console. And Joker's going to Switch. It just makes too much sense. Maybe S stands for sense. I guess we'll just have to wait and see on this. Again, the Switch port is, is purely rumors, so don't get too excited. I don't want to get your hopes up for you to go and be crushed, but I will say that if it ends up becoming true, I guess that makes my fake direct like 10% less fake, right? Because I did a kind of announce Persona Go on a Switch. Actually, I touched on this once already in the Yoshi video Kim and I just put out where we were crafting things from the Yoshi game. I'm explaining it because you probably didn't see it because YouTube decided to bury that video in the algorithm and no one got to see that video, but it's fine, it's whatever. But I did mention in that video that I thought it was funny how many people were going and watching that video after April Fool's Day and thinking that I was reacting to a joke from April Fool's Day and calling me stupid for believing that that direct I was reacting to was real when in actuality, I made that direct. <laughs> and on top of that, on the other side of the fence, I had a lot of people asking me how I made that direct. For me, that jumble meshed that thing together and can see all the flaws in the editing, I was actually wondering if it was gonna fool anyone at all. So it was kind of cool for me to have all these people ask me how I made it, but also to have people think that I thought it was real because of how real it looked. So on that note, I, I wanna show you how I made it because so many people wanna know, I, I wanna show you. So let's go. Okay, I don't wanna brag about this for too long and I keep it short and sweet, but I I'm gonna show you guys the little details as to how I made this. To start with, you can kind of see it too. You can kind of see where I faked it. Let me turn that layer off, see? I just keyframed the 4-1 coming in. This was my favorite one. So the Super Nintendo Online, 
This was my first idea. Initially, this was what my April Fool's joke was going to be. It wasn't going to be a full direct. It was going to be me announcing Super Nintendo. What I did was I spliced together the Super Nintendo classic trailer, and then it ends that trailer, and it splices straight into Nintendo Online. If you take this away somewhere in here, there, there's the original trailer. All I had to do was add in a few top layers and then make them fade out. <laughs> you don't really notice how janky it is, and the whole thing is janky. I just superimposed the Super Nintendo over the top. If I turn off that layer, you can see the actual trailer behind it. Like, it's so janky. It's not good, but because it's all so fast, it's kind of really easy to miss how janky it is. So that was that one. I was really proud of that. And then I was also really proud of the Persona 5. Is this Persona logo, which I got from a green screen on YouTube, which made it look a little bit more legit. And then I superimposed the footage over the Doom trailer and just keyframed it in. And then to make it look a little bit more legit, um, I put in, I downloaded a font that looks like the Persona font and then added in this, I, and don't forget, and then I spliced it straight into the Smash Bros trailer. Oh, and by the way, him talking in between was me going through pretty much only the last direct and grabbing little like voice clips from him just saying things like, thanks for watching, moving on. It was never anything like him talking specifics apart from this part too. <laughs> the Witcher trailer was the easiest one. I literally just took uh, the Skyrim trailer and then put the Witcher trailer on and you have Skyrim and Witcher. <laughs> the Metroid trailer and the, the Zelda Maker trailer were both fan-made trailers on YouTube that I just stole and hacked up differently and then reacted to them. Um, I gave them credit though. You can see that in the description of the video and the end of the video. Both very cool uh, fan-made trailers. And then the final one was obviously writing. That was the point where you were supposed to realize it was a joke or maybe get hyped up for Breath of the Wild 2 with these amazing graphics. That Direct, it took me a full day to make that. And the time flew by, I had a lot of fun making it, but it took me hours to make that. If you were fooled by it, it wasn't something that I just threw together. You were fooled by something that took a lot of work. If you take any solace in anything, please take solace in that. I, even though it was just an April Fool's joke and like I was not the only one to do it, I was just the one that arguably did it best. <laughs> I'm still sorry. I'm still I am I am immensely sorry because if it had got me I would have been mad at me also so I understand but let's just move forward Let's just love each other and move on with our lives. I'm sorry, but it, it was funny and I like it <laughs> Now a lot of you at this point might be wondering I've waited this long What was it that made you angry made you want to burst out of your clothes and turn a bright shade of green and start tearing things up? You said that something really annoyed you recently that actually kind of hurt my abs doing that. <laughs> it's not so much angry right now as it is I might end up getting angry about it later on if this trend continues. RGT85, a friend of mine actually, uploaded a video today uh, calling awareness to something that I didn't realize. Wolfenstein, the DLC that's coming out, the add-on, whatever you want to call it, Youngblood, where you play as... Where you play as, uh, Bob... Uh, I forgot the main character's name. Blaskowitz, I, you play as his children, his two girls. It's coming to Switch. It's getting a physical release. You know, you got the case, you got the card, the little, little thing you put into your Switch to play the game with, the thing that you lick and it tastes really bad. You know how it goes. Well, apparently, nothing's on that card. Um, you put it in your Switch, and then your Switch goes and downloads the entire game. The cut is essentially empty, other than queuing you to get to get the download. And I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, r again, right now, it's kind of like, yeah, that sucks. But if this is a trend that continues, and it's a trend that's been building up for a while, this, this could get dicey. And let me talk about some theories I have here to do with this, and also examples of the past. So we saw this happen a lot, like immediately with the Switch. We saw games like the Resident Evil Revelations collections, where the first, actually Capcom did this more than anyone, where the first game was on the cart, and then the second game wasn't on the cart, you had to download it. We saw that with Bayonetta as well, and we saw that with the Mega Man collections. This one kind of blew my mind. I'm not really sure why Mega Man of all games couldn't fit all on the cart. You would think that those ROMs are pretty tiny, and you could easily fit like a hundred Super Nintendo games on the cart. Maybe I'm wrong, but that, that one surprised me. But with all these games, I thought maybe it was an anti-pre-owning measure thing, where if you had to download half of it, it kind of prevented people from getting a download copy of the game in case the code was already used, and instead going and getting the new version, which obviously directly feeds back to the developers and the publishers, rather than the pre-owned version feeding back in the GameStop or wherever it is you're buying.
playing it from. And I'm sure that's a nice little added bonus to doing it this way, but actually I have another theory, and I don't know if anyone else has talked about this at all or put this theory across, but it's something that I've thought of recently because of conversations I've had with a lot of people that are making Switch games. Obviously I have really great connections with companies like Super Rare Games, a fantastic game publisher, and Limited Run Games, also a fantastic game publisher, and so I've got to learn a little bit about what it takes to put a game on the Switch. Now I was told this and I can't quite remember the specifics, it's it might not even be new news to people and I don't know exactly what the card sizes are, but when you want to put a game on the Switch, like when these companies like Limited Run, like Super Rare want to put a game on the Switch, they obviously have to buy in mass amounts the cartridges from Nintendo. So they can slap the game on there, put the artwork on there and then ship them out. They have to buy those and they're not cheap. And what I didn't know was those cards come in different sizes. I think it's like SD cards. I think the highest was 64 gigs and then under that you had like 28 gigs or 30 gigs or whatever the SD card sizes are around there. So your choices literally are one size that's like 30 gigs and then a second size that's like 64. So you only get two size choices. And the second one, the bigger one, is twice as expensive. And I believe it's like 40 bucks. I think the first card's something like $25 and then the second card is 40. What this means is if you're putting a game on the Switch that's a couple gigs bigger than the smaller size, you have to spend an extra $20 per game that you're shipping out, an extra $20 loss. Every game you sell, you're losing $20 on it because you have to buy that bigger card just for a couple extra gigs. I mean, that's gotta suck. So in a way, yeah, I get it. So here's what I'm thinking with Wolfenstein. What if Wolfenstein was something like a 25, 30 gig game? Whatever it is that pushes it over the limit of needing to spend that extra 20 bucks per game. I mean, I don't think Wolfenstein 2 sold that great on Switch, especially not physically. So if they were gonna be able to save 20 bucks, I'm sure they were going to do it. And if their game can't fit on the cheaper card, they were left with really two options. One, half the game is downloadable or a portion of the game is downloadable. So you get most of it on the cartridge and then you have to download the rest or the entire thing gets downloaded. And I mean, at the point where you don't have the full game on there anyway, it's not playable, it's not finished, it's not the entire thing unless you go and download some of it, then you may as well download all of it. And games are expanding and growing so much every single day that yeah, a lot of games can't fit on tiny Nintendo cartridges. Right now they can fit on Blu-ray discs, but for how long? Yeah, I guess now that I've even talked it through myself, I'm not really that angry about it. It's more just food for thought. But I'd like to know what you guys think about it. Does it bother you that this game doesn't have the game on it? And moving forward into the future, is this something you would be okay with for all games? Or is that essentially to you the same as not owning the game and just buying it digitally? But that's all for me. I know it's been like 10 minutes since I said it, so don't forget to check out Skillshare. The first 500 people down below get two months free. And don't forget to enter to win that Nintendo Switch. For more information on that, you can click or tap right here on this video. Thanks again to Jordan Fringe for editing these videos. He's doing a fantastic job. And lately, I've been so stressed for time. I've been sending him these videos, like, at the moment that I need them to go live. So please make sure to check out his channel. I'll leave links to that down below as well. If you like this video or you learned a little something, make sure you hit flip all over that subscribe button. I know I joked about this being easy content that I put together at the last second, but I actually really enjoy doing these because there's no script, there's no planning. I just kind of get to talk about gaming, the things I love, the things I hate, and blab out of my mouth. Okay, bye!